school dude Clem here, as some of you think I say. I think it's about time to do some more electronics. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, you're really lovely. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So I thought I'd return to the mysterious world of switch mode power supplies. I know, I keep going away, coming back, going away, coming back, but producing content's harder than you think. Anyway, in this video I'm going to be investigating these two switch mode converters, one of which has a very amusing name. Now, I haven't chosen the values of the capacitors and inductors and everything, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to need some control signal for the MOSFETs. So I'm just going to build up some kind of pulse width modulation circuit where I can adjust the frequency and the duty cycle, and that's going to be on a separate supply just to make things easier. So, I got one of my TL494s out of my stash of chips, wired it up. So, let's see how well this works. This control here is for the frequency. This control is for the duty cycle. Now, I know some of you are going to want to see the schematic of that, so I'm not going to disappoint. So, here it is. Designed it myself, because I'm awesome. I'm only using one of the outputs on the chip, which is pin 9. But I thought it would be a good idea not to leave output 2 floating, so yeah, there's another 1k resistor there as well. So, let's turn it on and see if it works. In the picture-in-picture picture, you can see the scope. I'm going to turn the power on, hopefully nothing blows up. Ah, there we go. We've got something. So, apparently it's oscillating at 23 kilohertz, so I'm going to turn the frequency up. And keep going. See how far we can actually go. Okay, 113 kilohertz. Let's see how low we can go. About almost 13 kilohertz. So I'm just going to get that up to about 50 kilohertz, which is right about there. Let's see if the duty cycle adjust works. And indeed it does. Go thin waves like I used to be. And big fat waves like I am now. Well, this is certainly looking a lot more populated now. So, as you can see, I've built up one of the converter circuits. I've also made a little addition to the PWM controller. Just simply added these two transistors here to buffer the output from the 494 and also so that can discharge the MOSFET gate because the 494 has no way of doing that so now unfortunately I don't have any inductors that match so I decided to wind my own found a couple of spare cores I have hoping that they would both be the same but of course they're not they both have 10 turns each this one is about 650 microhenry when I measured it this one was 400 something I forgot but hopefully that shouldn't be too much of a problem so the only thing I've got to do now is find a separate power supply so I can power up the PWM controller so I have an isolated supply for both parts of the circuit. I'm liking the look of this. It's looking very good. Like my current limiter. Sometimes the simplest options are the best. So if anything shorts out or even partially shorts out, this light will come on and current will go through it, rather than any of the other circuits. Okay then, so we're about ready to start. So I've got everything wired up, it's all on right now. I've got a couple of resistors here, on the output of this circuit, just to stop the voltage from running away uncontrollably. I've got this set to 50 kilohertz, and I've got the duty cycle set to nothing. So, I'm going to start turning up the duty cycle. And let's see what we get. Okay, so we're about... Was that on the scope? 5% duty cycle, we're getting 1 volt out. Let's start winding it up. And see what we get. 2 volts. 3 volts. 
We get four volts. Yep. Five. Let's see how far we can actually go. Oh, our current limiting bulb has just started to come on. About eight volts right now. Let's just turn it up a little bit more. Okay, so can get about eight volts out of this. Now I'm going to adjust the frequency. Let's see if that makes any difference. Let's go down a little bit. Okay, we don't want to go down. So let's go up. Okay, I had that about eight volts just a minute ago. Let's see if we can get that. Okay. So, I think that's about as best as I'm going to get it. Got my words a bit mixed up there. Let's just make sure nothing's getting hot. Resistors are a little bit warm, I expect that. Capacitor, MOSFET, coils. Everything is pretty much relatively cold. So, what frequency are we at right now? About 59 kilohertz, according to the scope. Now, if I took this bulb out, we would probably get a lot more than that, because, yeah, that is limiting. But, yeah, I think that's a pretty good start. Alright, so I've put a slightly lighter load on it now. This is a 2.7K resistor. Let's start winding up the voltage and see what we get. Well, start winding up the pulse width. Okay, we're getting a lot more voltage than we were before, but then there's no regulation on the circuit, so... Let's see how much voltage we can actually get out of this. Okay, we're getting a lot more than we're putting in, so I'm only putting 12 volts into this, and we're getting almost twice that out. Okay, I'm going to wind that up all the way. I'd better not go any further than that because those capacitors aren't going to take that, so yeah. Also, I'm seeing the bulb coming on a little bit. Uh, is it just the frequency again? Yeah, I'm not going to go any further than that. Okay. Reconfigured the circuit, so it's now the um, second one. So, all that's really changed is that the MOSFET and the coil have switched positions. And also, this diode has been flipped around and so has this capacitor, because this configuration does not invert the voltage. Also, I'm going to admit that I made a bit of a cock up. I thought this one was the one with more microhenries, and this one is the one with lower microhenries. It turns out it's the other way around, because I just remeasured them. This one is 460 microhenries, this one is 737. But it's not really going to matter too much. Right, so let's test this thing. The oscillator's already on, but it's on zero duty cycle. So I'm going to turn this part of the circuit on now. And as before, we'll see the waveform on the scope and see the voltage on the meter. So, I've got the 2.7 kilo ohm load connected. So let's see what we get. Okay, we're we'll starting to get voltage. About 3.4 volts. Let's start winding it up and see where we can go. 12 volts. Can we get 24 volts? 24 volts. I'm going to go all the way up to 30. And I'm not going any further than that. Right, this is the other load. Let's see what we get with this. 0.7 volts. See, can we go up to where we had it before? 3.4 volts, 5 volts, 7 volts. Okay, that's fully open. So, yeah, we're getting about the same results as we got before. Now, I'm just going to make a little tweak to this, see if I can just get that any better. So, um, there we go. Is anything getting hot? Can you see these resistors? A little tiny bit of warmth. Is the MOSFET hot? Nope. The capacitor? Nope. Coils? Nope. Everything's happy. Including myself. 
Yeah, but I'm not going to take this any further. All in all, though, I don't think this could have gone any better. So, yeah. Anyway, next time on my Switch Mode Power Supply endeavors, I'm going to build a proper Switch Mode Power Supply. You know, one that takes mains voltage and converts it down to DC. Anyway, I've got a whole ton of video to edit now and a whole bunch of other things to do, so until next time, goodbye. So I thought I'd repent back in my... Two floating, so yeah, there's another 1K resistor there as well. <coughs> Gotta stop breathing. I'm going to build a proper switch mode power supply. You know, one that takes mains voltage and converts it down to... No, it doesn't convert it down to farts. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be... Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be investing... Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be investigating these two switch mode converters. Oh, well, they're both recording, whatever. That was a terrible synchronization clap. And that was another terrible synchronization clap. That's better. Don't want to do a little kiddie one that just goes... I want to do a big muscular one that goes...